Robert Plank Show episode 130. Fix your process and goals to undo the past and create the future with Matt Powell. Be sure to go to robertplank.com slash iTunes and subscribe, rate, and review us. Hey everyone, and welcome back to The Robert Plank Show. This is the podcast where we talk about making a living using the internet and making money from home, working from home, making money online, all that fun stuff. And our guest today is Matt Powell. Powell, sorry. Uh, After over two decades of teaching thousands around the world, Matt Powell knows how to teach and motivate, think better under the stress of everyday life, improve and grow and create success. And he has his latest book out called Undo, How to Undo the Past and Plan Your Future. And he has a website as well called pastless.net. So Matt, welcome to the show. I'm glad to have you here. Hey, I'm glad to be on. I appreciate it, Robert. Heck yeah. So, I mean, I understand that uh, you have a lot of things to say and uh, you have a lot of hobbies and you have this martial arts stuff. So can you kind of tell me a little bit about uh, who is Matt Powell and what it is that you do and what makes you unique and special? Um, I, I know what makes me unique and special. My mom might say something different, but, um, you know, about 20 years ago, I started learning this strange martial art no one had ever heard of. And that led me to, you know, spending time in Russia training at their schools in martial art in the early 2000s and then coming back over here and teaching over here. And over time, we built our own organization um, called Promek. And that's P-R-A-M-E-K. Um, we have a website, promek.com. And that started off as just, you know, guys in a garage. And I built it online and then in real world into an international organization with teachers all over the world. And, you know, the whole time I was doing that, I was also working my way up the corporate ladder into the corporate boardrooms. I was starting online businesses. I was doing kind of everything that I could possibly do. I'm not one of those people that sit, sit still for very long. And so, you know, over time I've published, you know, five books that are now on Amazon, hundreds of videos on YouTube, um, you know, two dozen instructional videos for sale in the martial art world, as well as, you know, teaching seminars around the world. And I learned a lot from that side of teaching and teaching all those people in the system that we developed and the way that it developed. But there was also the lessons learned of being, you know, in the corporate world and being an entrepreneur. And so I decided about a year ago that I would start to take these and combine them um, into more of a kind of do what Promek did for martial art, pathless and undo would do for the personal growth sector. And so, you know, I started to focus on taking the concepts that worked so well for teaching people, you know, everybody from the special forces to soccer moms and starting applying it to personal growth. So, you know, it's a, it's a very methodically laid out system based on what we saw work teaching people under the most stressful situations that they could be. Um, and we apply it towards the personal growth, you know, personal success and happiness side of the of the world, you might say. Okay, and, and I mean, and that's kind of interesting. So, can um, can you kind of tell me about um, about this whole like undo book and just basically like what are the what are the steps? What's it about? How it all relates to the the martial arts, the success, and all that kind of stuff. So. We developed this learning system in martial art that we called the CLM, and I developed it with a couple of PhDs that had PhDs in adult learning and psychology because we found that, you know, the way that we were taught didn't translate to the way that people learned very well if they were learning mental and physical skills. And so we developed over time this learning system that now all these other schools and systems have adopted as their learning system. And, you know, we found that people were, you know, learning skills faster then they were learning in other skills by using this. So I said, okay, let me, let me look at, it's all about the human brain. You know, it's all about how the brain works. It's all about how the brain processes memories, how the brain, you know, forms habits. So let me take that over to the success side because whether you're, you know, learning to punch or whether you're learning to operate as an entrepreneur, you're going to develop, you know, physical and psychological habits to go along with success or failure. And life is a little like quicksand day to day. You know, you can't unstick yourself until you stop moving and kind of take stock of the situation around you. 
And so what undo the book is, is that undo is, you know, we're undoing the past. It means that we're recognizing the why we fail, not what we fail at. And a lot of people confuse that. You know, they focus on the what they're failing at. And so, you know, people set goals, but then they don't consider if they're setting the right goals. You know, so they end up with a decent process to achieve goals, but they've set the wrong goals that weren't attainable. So they kind of circle for a while. And so what we do with undo is we try to break these cycles. You know, we, we break that cycle. Then you're set up to where you can start setting goals because you've taken care of the underlying reasons why you're failing. So now you're able to start setting goals. And so what we do is then – we have a workbook that goes along with Undo. It's a 40-page workbook that takes you step-by-step step through the whole process. And so it starts you at the goals that you had last year, the failures that you had last year, looking at those underlying reasons, the why, is not the what, and setting up a process to fix that day-to-day -day so that you break that cycle of failure that's been going on. That, that it's the habit that you've picked up over time. Then we do this long process of setting attainable goals all the way from the very beginning of free writing out your goals to how you set your life on autopilot using the book to basically make goal achievement a habit. And, you know, it's, it's really about the book is kind of a, I don't want to say colloquial, but it's a very, my editors hated it because I wrote it like I was speaking to somebody. I didn't write it like I was writing a book. And then the workbook follows along with it. So page by page, as you go through the book, you're going through the workbook at the same time. So it's a very interesting process that kind of develops habits for people um, to kind of get out there and achieve the goals that they want to achieve. And, and I love that. And I think that, I mean, yeah, like I, I know that over the years, like if I ever – if I'm ever trying to like, you know, get out of a funk or I'm, I'm always trying to like, you know, switch to some kind of time management system, it's always like, well, if the, if the underlying foundation or whatever you want to call it, if that's still messed up, it doesn't even matter like, you know, what my, what I'm planning, what I'm building towards or what kind of system I'm using. It's like, if the, I don't know, if the, if the insides aren't right, then, um, then what's what's the point of anything, right? And and I like that. And I like that, you know, like, I like the, like the Tim Ferriss or the Matt Fury kind of stuff where it's like, it almost like I mean I know nothing about martial arts or any of that stuff, but I I like the idea of kind of breaking yourself down and then building yourself back up and having the you know the the discipline and the habits and the repetitions and all that kind of stuff. And I like how like, kind of like you mentioned there that um, people kind of learn the the stuff, but they also go through the workbook so that way it kind of avoids the 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 foo foo hippie sort of you know feel good <laughs> stuff. Is that right? Yeah, I, what we found, I, Matt Fury, God, I haven't, I haven't talked to Matt in probably a decade. I used to talk to him back in the day um, in, in martial art, I guess, back in the, in the mid-2000s. The mid um, and Tim has, you know, he's done some great systematic, you know, methodology to kind of exposing people's methods so that other people can pick them up. I think there, I, I differ a little bit when you ask what makes you different is that you can have the best process in the world, but if you don't have the right goals, you're going to consistently get into a funk. You're going to go after 2016 with a 2015 mindset. And so a lot of times people have all these processes, and this is why I did undo, because I saw what was happening in the martial art world is I traveled and taught thousands, you know, personally laying hands on what they were doing but I was seeing that, you know, these people, they, they've got this process, but what they're trying to do, they never really thought through what they were trying to do at the, at the end. You know, I, what is it that Stephen Covey says, you know, begin with the end in mind and, you know, look at the future and kind of work backward, go page by page. And when you look at the reviews on Amazon, everybody says the same thing, like, wow, this book actually, it works. And, that, and that's pretty cool. And I'm, I'm kind of looking through the um, the reviews and, and things here. So, could, I mean, can you kind of tell us about like how this all happened for you? Like, I mean, was it was there a point where like was there a period of time before you discovered all this martial arts stuff? Was there a period of time when there were specific things that were like really wrong in your life, and then kind of stumbling on this uh, 
made you the person you are now? Did that kind of thing happen? I've, it, there was nothing ever really, I know a lot of times people have like some epic, you know, moment or they have some type of challenge in their life or obstacle that they can't overcome and then they overcome it and it becomes inspirational. I love those stories. I love, I have a friend of mine that is a martial art instructor and he was born with half a heart and he has steel rods in his back and he's out there doing incredible karate stuff. I never had anything like that. Um, I learned through, you know, kind of trial by fire between the martial arts and then doing executive protection and then doing law enforcement, you know, and being under extremely stressful situations and then teaching other people extremely stressful situations. What made me switch from martial art and move in this direction was is that I did have a situation that really, it, it, it's still tough to, to talk about a little bit. I had a, fr a childhood friend of mine, and over the years, um, he and my brother had stayed in contact, but I hadn't stayed in contact with him. My brother called me up one day and he said, you know, he's got cancer and he loves what you're doing with martial art. You really ought to give him a call. And I didn't realize that he had like stage four rare cancer and he was dying. And so we spent hours upon hours on the phone just talking. He was a business owner. He was an entrepreneur. And, you know, we would talk at night and he would pass out for 30 minutes. Well, you know, because he was under so many medications, he would come back to and we would talk and talk. And he passed away one day. And a few years later, I um, was driving to Florida to the beach house. I mean, I've been successful at what I've done. And I just kind of said, man, I'm tired of teaching people how to punch somebody in the nose. Like, I'm t there's got to be more. And I remember those conversations with Barry because he would say, you know, Matt, I feel like you could do more. I feel like there's, if you just took these processes and taught somebody about business, or maybe you talk to, talk to a new college graduate and give them some processes that, you know, that way they're not learning this, you know, in 10 to 15 years into their career when they could have done better at the beginning. And I got down to Florida and I just started, I pulled out all the notes and, you know, pulled out the Glenn Fittich and, you know, really had a heart to heart with myself. And one of the things that one of my teachers told me one time is only you look in your mirror. And I looked in the mirror and I thought, you know, I, I can do more than this and I can help more than just teaching people this over here. And so the, a bunch of books were started. That was a couple of years ago. And out of the books that were started, um, Undo is a bit of a composite of the different books that I had started at the time. So I never really had anything that was a big challenge or obstacle. I put myself into a lot of challenging and <laughs> situations through, you know, the decisions I made in my career, but the biggest obstacle that I really ever overcame was to take what was 20 years of an identity as a world-class martial art instructor and developer and teacher and to have to make that internal switch to saying, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do 2016 or 2015 with that year's mindset, not try to do it with 2010's mindset. And that's, and that's kind of interesting. So could you kind of tell us about, I mean, aside from the book, what is it that you do now? Do you have uh, products? Do you have a blog? Do you have a podcast? Yeah. What are you up to these days? So a um, couple of different things. So I do security consulting as a day job. I, I've always kept a day job. I remember my, my primary teacher a long time ago, he said, you know, always have a day job because if you have to do what you you know, if you have to do your hobby to put food on the table, you'll end up hating it and you'll sell it out and you'll water it down. And so I've always kept a day job and I've worked my way up the corporate ladder. And so, you know, day job, I do that. It allows me to go wherever I want, live how I want. You know, I've really built my life around what my goals were, which was to have a very free life to be able to explore and do things. And then you have Pathless and you have Promax. So Pathless.net is the home of undo. You know, you can go to passless.net. We have a free ebook over at Passless that um, it's called Opening Case of Life. And it's eight concepts that I've learned over 20 years traveling the world, learning from different teachers. It's kind of eight things that people said that really stuck with me. And I put them in, you know, a format that you can just, here it is. In case of, you feel like you're not communicating correctly. In case you feel labeled in case you're feeling anxious about the future. And here's the wisdom behind it. 
And then you can also pick up Undo over at Amazon.com if you just type in Undo. Um, I think it's like the second thing that pops up on Amazon. And then over at Promac, that's a whole different animal because Promac is, you know, it has four books that have been, uh, that I've written about it. It has, I think we're at 201 videos on YouTube, um, two dozen for sale instructionals, and that's very martial art, fitness, movement. You know, there's movement videos, how to increase your movement, get your range of motion. You know, there's combatants videos, there's videos on how to develop habits. Um, so we've done a lot of different things with, with Promec. So, and that's Promec.com, P-R-A-N-E-K.com. Well, cool. Oh, cool. So do you, I mean, in all your, um, in all your writings and your adventures and talking to people, like, do you think, I mean, what do you think is the, the place where everyone's going wrong? Like, is it that people aren't awake or they're not disciplined or they're not self-aware or they're backsliding? Like, what do you see where everyone is going wrong? It seems. I think if, if you're talking about people in general, I think everyone focuses on the what and not the why. And that is one of the most, you know, that there's two things that most people do wrong um, when it comes to achieving success for their life. The first thing is you have to stop being right. Um, you know, if you, if every time you interact with somebody, you're making assumptions on the way that the interaction is going to go, then you're living in the past. And everything that's ever happened in the past is the way that your brain is designed. It it's catching up and you want to be right and you want to show them that you're right. And you don't really find out what they offer for your future, what they you know, can bring you, how you can work with them, interact with them. That if you just stop being right and you start being in the moment and really taking a look at it and thinking about it and, you know, changing your anchor point for your thoughts to your future instead of right now or the past, you're going to start viewing people in situations and obstacles or whatever it is, is moving you towards somewhere in the future. And then you're going to see how you can use that interaction to get there. And I think the second thing is, is that, you know, we live in a transactional world, um, you know, physically and mentally, spiritually, it's right now, right now, right now. And, you know, people focus on the what. And, you know, the what is the thing that you can go and tell your spouse about? The what is the thing that you can go to the bar and complain about? But if you focus on the what, then you're just kind of in this linear timeline of a bunch of what that you failed at. And if people take like a book like Undo and go through the process to find their failure themes, they're going to find that most of their what, they never even, they're forced through the way that they've developed their habits over time to consistently fail. And so you have to start looking at that why, why did that happen? Why did that happen? And then you can really start to stop the what's from happening. So if you stop being right and, you know, look at the interactions that you have is how can they get me somewhere instead of, you know, how can, how can I make sure that, you know, I'm the person that's coming ahead in this. And then also look at the, you know, the why you fail through, like I said, a book like Undo instead of what you fail at. You're about 90% of the way to getting more successful than you've ever been. And, and I love that message, not, not only to, to stop being right, but to kind of live in the moment. And I think that, um, I mean, years, maybe, I don't know, five, six years ago, someone quoted Dr. Phil to me, like there was a situation where um, I was just kind of, I, I needed to change my thinking, right? And he, he quoted Dr. Phil and said, well, would you rather be right or be happy? And kind of along those lines, I mean, with these days with all the, you know, like it, it's so easy to get distracted, right? Like a, the latest Facebook pop-up, the latest, you know, the phone's blowing up. And even, um, I mean, I, maybe, I don't know, maybe 14 years ago or so um, when I, I transitioned from high school to college, when there was the orientation day, they kind of had uh, – there was something that they said that was along the lines of, well, when you're in high school mode, when you're in the high school mindset, you're only really paying attention to about 30, 35 percent. And he's like, well, when when you're, you know, trying to actually be an adult, being a grown up, you kind of have to be, you know, 80 percent there or higher. And that was just kind of kind of kind of like all the things you've been talking about today, like all these really simple concepts. But it's so simple. And yet it seems like a lot of people are are missing the boat and kind of need to readjust right 
Well, I think that there's so many options out there. There's so many things that, you know, people, I'm going to try Tony Robbins stuff for a little while. Oh, I, I didn't get to where I wanted to go. I'm going to go to Zig Ziglar. Oh, didn't get there. I'm going to go to Penn Ferris. Oh, I didn't get it there. That, you know, people are just constantly moving. And I tell people, if you really want to live in the now and find out how far off you are from where you, from being in the now, Take 30 minutes a day, get a book, and read it aloud. And what you'll find is that your brain is so all over the place that you can barely read aloud. If you go to a zoo, if you go to a museum, you'll find that you don't even read the placards. You kind of skip around real quick, and then you look back up because we just don't have attention spans anymore. We're, we're, we're taking in too much information and, you know, if you start to, that's what we found in martial art is that if you, if I want to do something, if I have one thing and that's the only thing I'm going to try to do, and you have 10 things that you're going to try to do, I'm going to win 90% of the time because I'm only focused on one thing. And so a lot of it is, it's just kind of, you know, bringing it back to these useful skills of picking up a book and reading aloud. If you're in your office at work, and you need to read a report, close the door and read it aloud and train your mind. You know, meditation is great. And I've been doing meditation for 20 years and I've done it all over the world. But you, it, you can't sit in your office and meditate all day. But what you can do is that you can focus the brain on things like reading aloud. And you'll find that you start to, okay, there's a whole lot going on in my mind right now. Let me just focus on this. And your communication skills get better your memory retention gets better, your everything, you know, your voice enunciation gets better all by reading aloud. And these are the types of little things that we found in the martial arts that, you know, we bring over. And, you know, when we teach people how to work under stress and duress, reading aloud is one of them. If I take somebody and I make you go out and I make you run and sprint and do everything you, as hard as you can and I bring you back and your heart rate is really elevated and I make you read aloud, you'll be amazed how much that duplicates what happens in public speaking. So you can train yourself for public speaking by reading aloud when you exercise. And it's all about just focusing the mind, focusing on the why, not the what. You know, focusing on being in the moment, not trying to get ahead and assume the conversation. Just that little bit of focus that just something as simple getting undo and reading the whole book aloud. And you'll find after a little period of time, you've, you've changed in a lot of ways. And, and, that, and that's pretty cool. And I, and I love that message. And I think that um, I'm going to be doing that today. I'll, I'll read aloud. I, I hereby promise to you, Matt Powell, that at some point today, I will read aloud 30 minutes uh, to, to find out what all the fuss is about and to, to regain my focus and kind of reset and stuff. So, I mean, so, so great. So I like all the, um, all the things that you have to, to share today, not only just the ideas, but also just kind of these, these little exercises, these little step-by-step -step things. I think I mentioned earlier that there's a lot of, you know, self-help mindset stuff out there. That's ju I mean, just ideas, right? Just clutter, just more, more stuff to kind of gum up the the gears right kind of like you were saying a few minutes ago that a lot of people just kind of dabble and sample and just kind of get a little taste of all these little things but they're kind of become like a, a jack of all trades master of none so i really like um all the stuff that you had to share with us today and i think that you know as you were talking i was kind of i was just kind of thinking to myself like okay well all these ideas but how do i get more focused so perfect little 30 minutes of um of reading something aloud. So could you tell us one more time to make sure that everyone knows uh, where to find out about you, yeah. where to find your book, where to find your website, just one more time for us. So you can go over to pathless.net, that's P-A-S-T-L-E-S-S dot net. Um, there you can get the free book. You can also get the link over to Amazon. If you're on Amazon once a day, like everybody else is, and you're a Prime member, then just type in undo, you'll find the book. And then if you're Amazon Prime, you can pick it up for $2.99. Um, if you're not Amazon Prime, you can get the, the paperback or the e-copy. Both of them are under $10. Bucks. Um, and, you know, you can always hit me up if you're on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash I am Matt Powell. And Instagram is the same thing. On Instagram, it's I am Matt Powell. 
and Twitter, I am Matt Powell. All of them are the same. Just remember, I am Matt Powell for social media, and I do my best to communicate through, you know, email or whatever. If people have questions about the book, if people have general questions about anything that they want to contact me about, you can go to passless.net or you can go to social media, and I'm definitely there to help out anybody that needs a little bit of a boost. And it seems like we all need that. Uh, even, I mean, maybe not every day, but I mean, we all get to the point where we need a little bit of help. So cool. So thanks, Matt, for uh, stopping by the show and sharing what it is you have to share. And uh, I appreciate you and appreciate everything that you have to say. So thanks again for stopping by. Hey, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You've got a great show. 